Good morning. I am Dr. Seema and today we will learn about perineal body. Specific learning objectives of today's class. At the end of the class, students should be able to explain the definition, location, muscles attached and applied aspects of perineal body. Perineum is a space just below the pelvic cavity. This diagram is a coronal section of the pelvic cavity and you can see this is the pelvic floor which is formed by the levator anae muscle and coccygeus and the space just below this, this is the perineum and you can even see this is the pelvic cavity and above that, that blue color indicates the abdominal cavity which is lined by peritoneum. The deep boundaries of perineum is similar to that of pelvic outlet. Anteriorly, it is bounded by lower border of symphysis pubis, anterolaterally by ischiopubic ramus, laterally by ischial tuberosities, posterolaterally by sacrotuberous ligament, and posteriorly by the tip of coccyx. And this diamond shaped perineum is divided into two triangles by an imaginary line joining the two ischial tuberosities and the anterior triangle is called as the urogenital triangle and the posterior triangle is called as the anal triangle. Perineal body or central tendon of perineum is the central point of perineum which is present at the junction between the urogenital triangle and anal triangle. It is a fibromuscular mass which is having an irregular shape and size and consistency of the perineal body is also variable. It is having collagen fibers and elastic fibers and both skeletal and smooth muscles. Perineal body is found in both males and females. In males, it is found between the bulb of penis and anus. In females, it is found between the vagina and anus and it is almost about 1.25 cm in front of the anus. The muscles of perineum and pelvic floor muscles get attached to the perineal body. So this is the urogenital triangle and this is the anal triangle. In the anal triangle mainly you have the two muscles over here which attach to the perineal body and in urogenital triangle it is extending between the two ischiopubic rame and this imaginary line. There are three fascias which is extending from one ischiopubic ramus to the other ischiopubic rame. And the, these three fascias, the first one is the superficial fascia of this region which is known as the colis fascia. And this colis fascia is a direct continuation of the membranous layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen that is scapas fascia. So this is person in lying down position and the same person if standing up the fascia will be inferior okay. This superficial fascia will be the inferior most. So this fascia is the, is the perineal fascia or the colis fascia. Here you can see this one okay and this is also in standing position. This is the first fascia that means most inferior that is the colis fascia. Or superficial fascia. Now just about that you have the deep fascia of this region that is the perineal membrane. Okay. So this is the perineal membrane just above the superficial fascia. Okay. Now about that this red color mark this is the pelvic fascia. Okay. And these three fascias attached one above the other in this urogenated triangle will be enclosing two spaces in between that is superficial perineal pouch and deep perineal pouch okay so between the colis fascia and the perineal membrane you have the superficial perineal pouch and between the perineal membrane and the pelvic fascia you will be having the deep perineal pouch and the superficial perineal pouch is also having muscles and deep perineal pouch is also having muscle and the muscles which are present here in the deep perineal pouch is called as the urogenital diaphragm. So the perineal membrane is otherwise called as the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm and 
or the inferior layer of the uh, urogenital diaphragm and the pelvic fascia is otherwise known as the superior layer of the urogenital diaphragm and all these things will be taken in other class i just want you to remember the muscles which are over here in the deep and superficial perineal pouch will be also getting attached to the perineal body 10 muscles of the perineum and pelvic floor converge and interlace at this point called perineal body it includes paired muscles and unpaired or single muscles the paired muscles are superficial transverse perineal muscle deep transverse perineal muscle bulbospongiosis levator anae anterior fibers and single or unpaired muscles are external anal sphincter and longitudinal muscle coat of rectum and anal canal now we'll see the muscles attached to the perineal body first we'll see the paired muscles these are the superficial transverse perineal muscles and these are present in the superficial perineal pouch and deep to it in the deep perineal pouch there are a pair of deep transverse perineal muscles which are placed exactly in the same way and all these muscles are attached from ischial tuberosity towards the perineal body and next pair of muscles are the bulbospongiosus muscle they are present around the vagina in females and around the root or bulb of the penis in male then other paired muscle are levator anae the anterior fibers of the levator anae which are known as the pubococcygeus are attached to uh, perineal body now we will see the single muscles this is the external anal sphincter and this is seen around the anus and one more unpaired muscle or the single muscle is the longitudinal muscle coat of the rectum and anal canal so all these muscles the 10 muscles are interlacing and joints with the perineal body this is the coronal section of anal canal like anywhere else in the GIT, this anal canal is also having in the muscularis externa, the inner circular muscle cord and outer longitudinal muscle cord. And this is the longitudinal muscle cord which will be continuing above as a longitudinal muscle cord of rectum. And few fibers of this will be interlacing with the perineal body. Fascias attached to the perineal body. Posterior borders of all the three fascias of the urogenital diaphragm are attached to the perineal body. They are colis fascia, perineal membrane and superior layer of the urogenital diaphragm. Damage to perineal body. Perineal body is essential for the integrity of the pelvic floor, particularly in females. Its rupture during vaginal birth leads to widening of the gap between the anterior borders of levator anae muscle of both sides thus predisposing the woman to prolapse of uterus, rectum or even the urinary bladder. Episiotomy is also known as perineotomy. It's a surgical incision given to the perineum and posterior wall of vagina and it is usually performed during second stage of labor to quickly enlarge the opening for the baby to pass through and there are two types of incisions given one is a median and other is a medio lateral the median incision begins from the frenulum where the two labia minora meets and it extends up to external anal sphincter and in this case there will be a definite damage of the perineal body the other one is a medio lateral which begins from the labia minora and ex extends at an angle of 45 degree downwards Thank you and have a nice day.